this is loud. Or should I say good afternoon? Um, so I'm going to talk about monitoring your code with log for Perl. My name's Tom Hewkins, and I've worked on various applications over the past few years written in Perl. Uh, some large, some small, some dealing with databases, some websites. And one of the tools I keep finding useful is log for Perl. So I'm going to tell you a little bit today about why I like log for Perl and why I just like the approach of logging in general, how I've used it, some of the things I've done. So it's kind of my story of what's happened. So we're halfway through Yapsi, it's almost lunchtime, I know you're hungry, but for 20 minutes I'm going to tell you a little bit about sort of what's been on my head about logging. So, application logging. Now, when you're writing an application, when you're running an application in production, different people care about different things at different times for different reasons. And so, what I'm going to talk to about today is the kind of the idea of what logging is, how it works, how it can help you, how it helps different people, all working on the same project, but all with different interests in that project, and how I think log for pearl is a useful tool for that. So first of all, why would you log? You know, why, why do we care? Uh, there's a, a, a million answers to this, but I'm going to kind of give you three that I keep finding useful in my work. And I think the first thing is that logging can help you explain your program. So you might have some code like this. Okay, so it's the day after the first Wednesday in the month and you go to the pub. Well, that's not very helpful code because if you're a maintenance programmer, you look at that and you think, well, why do I go to the pub? So maybe you could put a comment in. I'm in London Pearlmongers and on the first the day after... It's silly. Anyway, we go to the pub sometimes. So this comment tells me why we go to the pub. Now, that's kind of helpful. The maintenance programmer sees the comment. But you can actually make that comment a bit more helpful in that it can tell you something about the code whilst it's running. So I'm not suggesting that all your comments should be log statements, but you can kind of have a comment so you explain the purpose of your code. And at the same time, you say it, it's something that gets logged when the program runs. Logging can help you highlight problems. Now, anyone who's run any sort of server probably has a whole load of error logs from that server, you know, the daemon process. And probably what you do is you ignore it all. Because there's a whole, I mean, if you run a web server, you'll get a whole load of, the default configuration for most web servers will tell you, someone requested this file and it's not there. Well, that's not really interesting. So the important thing about logging is configuring it to tell you what you care about. And you might have something, you, you, when you write the code, you can you know, say what, why you're going to the pub. You can have something like this, a timestamp. Um, a warn there is how important this message is, line number. Um, but the important thing here is you, when you're writing your code, you want to say what matters, but different things matter at different times. And it's really important to configure your application to only log the things you care about. When you're running a long running process, logs can be really helpful because they show progress. It's really easy to you know, type in a command, hit return, and then just sit there. And there's no output. And you think, is this program running? Is it talking to the network? Is it blocking on CPU? Is it blocking on disk? And you don't know what's going on. So, Having something like this as a log file can, you know, as the program's running, every, sec every few seconds here, it's showing us what has happened. So those are kind of some, some things I care about, why I put logging in my applications. Um, but really, I'm here to talk about log for Perl. And there are various different features in log for Perl that I find useful. Now, there are lots of logging modules on CPAN, as, you know, CPAN always has a million solutions to every problem. And log for Perl is just one of the logging modules on CPAN. Um, and the, the, the five things here, uh, for me, the, re the key things about log for Perl, and I'm going to talk through them one at a time. So levels, that's basically the idea of how important is a log message. And we've got varying importance from fatal, it's like, ah, the program died, all the way down to trace, which is kind of like, 
oh, I'm going to the shops and I'll get some milk and I need to go out of the door. And, and so you have very chatty detail. Now, it's helpful to write this in your code because, as I say, different people care about different things at different times. So you probably don't care about trace when you're running in production, but maybe in development you're dealing with some weird bug and so you can switch trace level on, but you don't care about it most of the time. Now, lots of the logging modules on CPAN have levels. That's a really common feature. If you've used syslog at all, you'll know levels. But categories are something that I think most logging tools don't have. And the idea of a category is basically which part of the system am I dealing with? So if you had the human body here, you might have my head, my limbs. Um, and the way that log for pearl deals with this is by default, it uses the name of the class you're working in. So if you've got, you know, if you modeled the human body as an object-oriented system, you've um, the dot here is the same as the double colon that you get in Perl for your package separators. And, and this is use categories are useful because let's say, uh, uh, yeah, I mean this is a silly example, but let's say you're, um, you care about the, the head, but you don't care about someone's legs. You can, you can process those different log messages. Um, and you can combine levels and categories. So here we've if this is basically how you would use log for Perl in your code. It's this simple. Get logger, it gets you the log for Perl object. It's a singleton object, so there's only one of it in your code base. And then you can call methods on dollar log. So that's, it's, it's really easy to use in your code, and you can switch it off when you don't care about it. Appenders are the parts of the system that define where messages go to. So we've talked about levels how important it is, categories, which part of the system it's in, and appenders are where does this message get sent to. And log for Perl comes with a few different things. We've got here message queues like RabbitMQ, Gearman. Uh, we can log to the screen, we can log to a file. Yeah. This is useful. It's really easy to write your own appenders. You can write one in a few lines of code to send it, you know, if, if you're running some different message queue that's not here, if you want to um, draw a picture of a cat with some text on it or some crazy stuff like that, you can do that using this stuff. And not only does log for Perl use its own appenders, but it can use anything that log dispatch supports. And log dispatch is another CPAN logging module, but unlike log for Perl, log dispatch doesn't have the idea of categories. So there's a whole load of stuff on here you can send your log messages to. I, I don't think there is one that draws a, writes your text on a picture of a cat, but hey, you know, <laughs> you could write that. So what ties all this together? Well, configuration. Um, and it's, you can write a really simple configuration like this, which is just saying that we want to log everything at debug level and more important. Um, and file is saying we're logging to a file. But then let's say, um, we're developing this system and at the moment we're working on the legs part of the code, we can send that out to the screen. So you can send different parts of different categories, different parts of the system to different places. Um, and this is basically, we, we've got on line two here, we've got the appender, we're sending it to the screen. Uh, we, we can define what the messages look like. That's the layout. And the last line is our conversion pattern. It's kind of sprintf-like, you know, the percent and then a character. So here we're saying which category is it in, what's the line number in the code, and then the message. But you can, there's all sorts of variables there so you can define how your log messages look. And the last useful part on top of this is another aspect of configuration which is filtering your messages. So you can say, let's say for example, um, you only care about log messages that contain the word hungry, because maybe it's almost lunchtime. Um, you can pop your code in here, sub hungry. Now, at this point, you're probably going to say to me, uh, you put code in a configuration file, and obviously that's a really bad move. But it's nice to be able to put small bits of code like this. You can also uh, write your own filters as a module. I've already said you can write your own appenders. One of the neat things about log for Perl is you can write tiny little bits of code to extend this stuff. Um, in a previous job I was working on, we had a system that needed to run during office hours. So we actually had a filter that didn't filter on the log message itself, but it looked at what the time was. 
And if it was between 9 o'clock in the morning and 5.30 in the evening, we sent a text message to phone. And my phone would beep every now and again. And then it's like, shit, let's go fix the system. So you'd run off, go fix the code. And the salespeople were happy. They could keep selling. Stuff didn't break. But when it was after 5.30, all the salespeople had gone home. So it didn't matter if this particular application broke. So filters are, you can use them for all sorts of stuff. Basically, do, do we care about this or not? So, here's kind of my, my overview of what you can do for Pell. There's various different things. You can tie them all together. Uh, different people care about different things at different times. Um, I think something that's really useful is you can actually change your configuration file. And if you've got a really long running process, you can have it watch your configuration file. So you can change, you can update your configuration. Let's say something weird is breaking in your code. Um, you can change the configuration file, the process automatically updates itself. Now this is really useful and it's really tempting to use, but it's one of those classic things of you have to be really careful because if you get the configuration wrong, stuff breaks. Um, so I've used that, but it, it's, it's, um, it makes me a bit nervous. But then sometimes restarting processes makes me nervous, so it, it's a tough one. Now, I've, told, I've already showed you how you can put log statements in your code. And at your main application level, the, the, the sort of if you've got one process running the main thing, it's really easy to get started using log for Perl. If you kind of put the log statements like I've shown throughout your code, to get started, you only need this. You don't even need a configuration file. And quite often when I'm starting a new project or writing something small, I'll start out with this. And then over time, I'll think, oh, I need, I need more, more complicated configuration, and I'll add that in later on. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more, because we've not used up that much time. And I'm going to start by talking about log any. Now, the great thing about log for Perl is it does all the cool stuff I've showed you. But let's imagine you're writing a module to go to CPAN, or you're working on a, a module which is used in lots of different code bases, say throughout a company, something like that. You might find that lots, all the different people in your organization are using lots of different logging systems. And what Log Any does is it, it basically doesn't care where you're logging to. You can log to Log for Perl, Log Dispatch, anything you want. And here, you, it's basically just like using log for Perl, but it means that you can integrate with all the different stuff a bit more easily. Um, so here, the, the key thing here is this, the third line where it's saying we're using log for Perl, but it means that you write your code with log any statements, and it, it will log to wherever you want to, wherever you want to send things. And Often we've got big data structures, which, you know, if you log, if you've got a complex data structure, you just write the, you know, dollar $f, in this case you'll get hash 0x, whatever, and that, that's no use. So you can use something like data dumper to filter your output here. Filters are not an annoying word, because I've, I've already said we can use filters in the configuration, but here we're filtering something to kind of customise how it's output. So filter has a couple of meanings there. One of the things I really like about log for Perl is the MDC, which is called the Mapped Diagnostic Context Line. I never remember that because it's a long, I don't know what that means. Um, but the way I think about this is basically uh, dealing with sessions. So I use this a lot when I'm writing web applications. If you've got a web request coming in, uh, maybe to generate an HTML page, but then a bunch of other requests, say Ajax things, sending out JSON, XML, whatever. But you want to know what was the original request that fired, fired this off, and you want to pass those requests through to another system. You can use the MDC to kind of um, log. It basically always outputs some, some information on every log message you call. Uh, so you, you put something into the MDC, and then when you've finished, you remove it. Um, I suppose the other thing I should mention is web frameworks, and I've used log for Perl with both Catalyst and Answer. Log, the main log for Perl distribution ships with a Catalyst uh, plugin, which works really nicely, no problems. The Dancer one is a little bit quirky in that it, it, well, it doesn't quite work right, but the way you can get around that is by using log any. Um, so if you're using Dancer and you want to log for Perl, you can 
plug, log any in. There are, there are um, you know, log for Perl works with whatever framework you're using, so you can easily include it in, in anything else. And basically, that's about it. That's kind of what I've, some stuff I've found useful with log for Perl, why I like using it. Do we have any questions? No. Okay, cool. Thank you very Oh, we have a question. Okay, so the, the idea here is that when you're running in, in different situations, you want to use different appenders. Um, and I suppose here the idea is that if you can point to different configuration files. So, as I said, you can edit the configuration file while the process is running, and you can have several of them. It does, does that, have I understood your question right? I'm not sure I have. Okay, you only want one configuration file. I mean, I suppose you could, it, it's kind of weird in that you can, because the configuration files you can embed Perl in, you could do something that basically has programming logic in the configuration file, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very flexible. Uh, what I did with Linux is I checked if the summary input is connected to Sorry, I can't hear. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm saying that basically you can check if standard input is connected or not. So that, that could be something you could put in your, your config file. Cool. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. No, oh, that's not a question. Okay, cool. I won't keep you from lunch any longer. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon.